It's about always having balance, and I think that's what the prophet, uh, the prophet's message, peace be upon him, it was fundamentally about having balance and equilibrium in all that we do. Uh, so that that was also something that which was quite revealing to me uh, when I became a Muslim is that when we talk about justice, uh, sometimes. Uh, our sense of justice can lead us to an injustice in the people who become the perpetrators, who were the initial perpetrators of an injustice against us. And the Prophet, peace be upon him's message was always that you repel bad with good, that you always respond to evil with good, that you should always remember that God loves justice and never transgress the limits, so that even when people are committing serious injustices against you, even when the perpetrators may be responsible for heinous crimes, you have a moral responsibility and a moral obligation in front of God to always uphold justice and never yourself transgress those limits. When we look at the Prophet, he, he wouldn't want to keep even a, an extra morsel of food in the house uh, out of fear that somebody else might be going without. Um, and that sort of utter devotion to ensuring that nobody was being deprived, that everybody was being cared for, uh, is something that if you do model yourself, as Muslims do, on, on the Prophet, peace be upon him, you can't possibly be negligent uh, and ignore the real inequalities that continue to be rife in the world around us, whether it be in our community with a small c community, in, a, in the bigger sense of society, or in the world at large. Um, and I think that one of the things that certainly has uh, really stayed with me is that being a Muslim is, is to try and be the, the voice of the voiceless. Islam's beauty really comes into its own when it becomes manifest. And it becomes manifest when you make it into a tool, into a tool for the betterment of society, into a tool for the betterment of humankind, and, and obviously fundamentally even beyond that, a, a tool for making uh, the world a better place. Um, so the, the ideal, I think, from an, uh, an Islamic perspective is for ethics to become lived ethics, to become um, an applied body of values uh, and not remain, uh, unfortunately, as it often is, cloistered in, in, uh, in the mosque or, or somewhere uh, which is somewhat divorced from reality. I think the example of uh, Muhammad Yunus, the uh, Nobel Prize winner, who had developed um, an, a, an economic model uh, to uh, get communities out of poverty, is just one example of applied ethics. He took a, a principle, a principle that you know people in poverty uh, had just as much right as anybody else to be given the economic means to uh, pull themselves out of poverty. And so he applied a principle, a principle of justice, and made it into uh, an economic model. And that's really lived Islam. That's really Islam in action and when you see Islam in action when you do see these principles translated into real-world actions then it's not only clear for us as a community to see it's clear for the world to see and obviously there's not really a greater recognition than than you know being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for me as a person I I, I can't possibly um, differentiate or distinguish between uh, me uh, and social justice. Social justice is an inherent part of being a Muslim and it's, therefore it's an inherent part of me as a person.